Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Poth on Programming video log part 3 of how to make a tile based platforming game. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a tiled background from a one dimensional tile map so stick around to find out how it's done using pure HTML5 and JavaScript. In this video I'm going to talk about the example program and what I've added since part 2. Then I'm going to talk about how to load the tile sheet image and store it in a tile sheet class. Finally, I'll show you the tile map in the game class and how it's drawn. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comments below and be sure to check out the source code on my GitHub page, which you can find linked in the video description. Alrighty guys, let's take a look at what has changed since part two. If I come over here in the browser, first I'm going to real quick, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up part two so you guys can see it. And that is right here. I'm going to press enter, load up part two. And this is part two. So as you can see, I have some jumping physics. I get keyboard input, but there's no tiled background. And to make this game, I'm definitely going to need a cool tiled background. So let's go over to part three and check out what we've done there. All right, so this is part three. And as you can see, it's a lot better. I still have the same game physics where my character jumps around and moves around. Same fluid physics, exact same physics code. The only difference now is the world is a different size and I have a tile map inside of it. Also, the color of the character is just a solid white and gray. The reason I did that was to more closely resemble the player sprite we're gonna be using, which is this little rabbit dude. And basically that's it. That's all the changes that have happened in part three since part two. The files where the changes occurred are display, game, and main. Everything else, I'm using uh, the controller class from part two. If I come into my directory here, I'm going to be using the controller class from part two and I'm going to be using that file and I'm also going to be using the engine class from part one. But this is part three and these are the only three files that you need to worry about if you've already watched part one and two. So anyway, on to the rest of the video. So the first thing we need to worry about for this application is how we're going to get our sprite sheet PNG image into our JavaScript so we can actually do something with it and have it render over here on the screen and show up on the background of our canvas element. So first we need to define some sort of container for our sprite sheet image and its different variables. And we do that inside of the display class. So here's my display class. It's one of the files that has changed since part two. And inside of it, I define a class called tile sheet. I come down to the bottom here. Here's my tile sheet class. It's just a really simple object. It has an image inside of it. This image object is going to store our tile sheet or our sprite sheet. And then it records the tile size. And I'm just going to hand in 16 because each one of our tiles is 16 by 16 pixels and the number of columns in our tile sheet. So I think that's eight off the top of my head. But if we come over here and we actually count them, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different tiles. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's eight tiles or eight columns in this map. Eight tiles across or eight columns, not just eight tiles in the map. Obviously, there's more. But so we have to define this tile sheet class, and it's just going to have an image, which is going to be our image. It's going to have the tile size, and it's going to have the number of columns in our tile sheet image. Now that we have this, we can actually go about loading this PNG image into our JavaScript so we can do something with it. And where that happens is the main JS file for part three. So if I come down to the bottom of my file here, you can see that I am setting the image of my tile sheet object in the display class. I'm setting the source of that image to the rabbit trap PNG. And that's going to start loading the rabbit trap PNG image here into the tile sheet objects image and when it's done loading it's going to fire this uh, event listener for loaded so it's going to say okay my image just loaded i have an event listener for that let's call this function the event handler function for a load event there i'm going to resize the screen that's just going to resize the brow browser window or not the browser window but resize our canvas to fit the browser window rather and it's going to call engine.start. It's going to start our game loop off. And then we're actually going to be able to use that graphic because if we start our engine before the graphic is fully loaded, we're going to try to draw graphics that just aren't loaded yet. 
and that's a problem. So make sure that your graphic is fully loaded with an event listener for load before you actually start your engine. Also down here, this extra parameter, once colon true, that just tells this event listener to only fire once and after it's done, it just junks it, sends it to the trash, sends it to garbage collection. We don't have to worry about removing this event listener from our tile sheet image because this parameter here just takes care of it. All right, so now that we've loaded our tile sheet image into our JavaScript, we actually have to get these individual images out of this sprite sheet or tile sheet. We have to draw them to different locations on the canvas to create something of a tiled map like you see here. So how do we do that? Well, it starts out in the game class and I have a map inside of my game class inside of the world. And basically it's just a big long array of values that point to different locations in the tile sheet. So the best way I can explain this to you is by just giving you an example. And I'm going to look down here in the bottom right of my numeric tile map at these three values, one, 43 and 10. Now these values correspond to locations inside of my tile sheet graphic. And they also correspond to these locations on the map. So this is the one tile. This here is going to be the 43 tile, and this over here is going to be the 10 tile. And as you can see, you can kind of make that connection. Those three tiles are going to be in this bottom right hand corner of the map. So now let's take a look at these tiles inside of the sprite sheet itself. We're going to have one, so that's going to be, for this example, it's going to be at position one in our map. Normally I start at zero, I, I start counting at zero, but for this example, I'm going to start counting at one. So Tile one is just going to be this corner tile. And as you can see right here in the map, it is that corner tile. These two tiles are the same. So tile one is just going to be this one right here. And if you think about it, it makes sense because this is the first tile index in the map. So it would just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And remember, this is tile ten. We have our ten tile right here. And it's just a plain clear brown tile. And if I come back to my map, you can see that that is in fact valued at tile 10. So now you kind of understand, or hopefully you understand the correlation between these values in a one dimensional tile map and the images on screen, as well as the locations of those images in the tile sheet image itself. But just because we have the map doesn't mean we're actually drawing this stuff to the screen. We actually have to write a function for that. And that function is going to be inside of the display class. And it's a function called draw map. And it's just going to take the map, which is just that array of values. So it's just going to be this I'm going to hand in and the number of columns in the map. And we have 12 columns in our map. I define that here, 12 columns. If you count, I actually have one, two, three, four, all the way to 12 columns inside of my map. If you look at the screen, you can count 12 tiles across. So this draw map function is just going to take the map and it's going to take the columns and it's going to loop through every single value in the map. So it's going to loop through every single number right here and it's going to get the value there. I subtract one from it and that's going to, if I don't subtract one, this is what happens. If I just add zero, let's take a look real quick and see what happens. And I'll show you a, a really simple way to remedy this, which I didn't use because I used a tile map editor to make this because I have really complex tiles here. But this is what it looks like. And it's because all of my tile values are offset by one. Now I set it back to negative one. The reason for that is in my tile map, these are all one higher than they should be. So this should actually be 17. This should be 48. This should be 49. This should be 31. They're all offset by one. That's just because the tile map editor I use, which is tiled, exports the comma separated values uh, starting at one instead of zero. I didn't feel like going through and changing all these. So hopefully this doesn't throw you guys off too much. Don't worry about it. When you make your maps, just make sure you have the right values starting at index zero in your tile sheet. So basically instead of this being one, it would be zero and you start counting from zero. But if you want to use a map editor like tiled, and you don't mind just having that offset. It's really simple. All you have to do is subtract one from the tile value and you're good to go. 
So anyway, that aside, let's get into how I'm actually placing those images from the source onto the buffer and then drawing it on the screen. So I get the different values or I get the value of the specific tile in the map that I'm looping over. I get the source X and Y position that I'm going to cut it out of the tile sheet at. And that's what this code right here does. It just takes the number of columns in the tile sheet, takes the value uh, that gets the column, and then you multiply by the tile size to get the actual position to cut out of inside of the tile sheet image. Oh, oh, didn't mean to do that. But that's basically just getting the X position to start cutting out of. Uh, come back in here. Then we have the Y value. That's going to get the Y position to start cutting out of. And then when you get the source, you're going to hand in the source X and Y, which is just these two values here, and the tile height and tile width, which I just have one of. It's tile size and it's 16 pixels. So source X and source Y are going to get me to the appropriate tile. Say I am at tile 8. That's going to put me right here. It would actually be a value of 7, but that's going to put me right here. And then I'm going to cut 16 pixels wide and 16 pixels high. So the Y value would be 0. The X value would be 128 minus 16 to get me right here to the left side of this tile. And then, because 128 is the width of my map, and it's just going to cut this tile out. So pretty simple. Come back here, display, look at the rest of this. Destination, it kind of looks like the same kind of mathematical formula. I'm just using the number of columns in my game world, which you remember is 12. So that's the number of columns in this map. And I'm multiplying that by 16 as well. Now, I guess I should be using the game.world.tile size, but I'm just using 16 for both, so I guess it doesn't really matter. And then finally, you're going to use this information to cut the appropriate image out of your tile sheet image and draw it into your buffer, which is then going to be drawn to the final on-screen canvas. So you're just going to say, I want to draw an image to my buffer from the tile sheet image, and I'm going to cut the image out of the tile sheet out at source X and source Y, and tile size width and tile size height. I'm going to draw it to the buffer at destination X and destination Y at the 16 by 16 width and height. So that's all that does. And then if I come out here into my main JS file and I come down to the, or up rather to the render function, you can see that I'm calling the display.drawmap function. I'm handing in the game.world.map and the game.world.coms into that function. And that is how you draw all those tiles to the game screen. In this video, I talked about how to load a sprite sheet image into your JavaScript, how to create a tile map array, and how to draw tiles from the sprite sheet to the display canvas. If you're worried that there was a lot of code I didn't cover, don't. All you need to know is how these basic components work together in order to build them yourself. Chances are your application structure will be different from mine, so don't focus too much on what I didn't show you and instead try to build the components I'm talking about into your own application. This stuff really works, and if you need the source code, you can find it on my GitHub page. Stick around for my next video, which will be on collision detection and response with the tile map. Until then, have a good one.